In 1946, the young Freenian farmer's son, Lorenzo Antonelli, made his dream come true. In one of the farm sheds, he built his own sports car from the remains of an old car frame and engine to participate in local hill climb and road races with the national heroes and the superior, well-crafted machines. With no funding and little knowledge about engineering, his dream was to join the established sports car companies and make a living building cars. The goal was not to build mass market models, but rather light and nimble machines that feel at home in the winding road in the foothills around his hometown in the suburbs of Nanilla. We step into Lorenzo's shoes in this automation campaign and see if we can build a tiny, shoddy sports car shed that will live on for decades. We'll do it again on an extreme difficulty setting of 100. No money, just a plot of land and a shed on top. Will the performance of lightweight, small engine sports cars convince enough enthusiasts to make the company survive? Will the shoddy job execution be turned into fine craftsmanship? Or will we go down as an unsuccessful side note in motorsports history? We will find out. I am the buyer, let's start a new campaign. The company will be located in Narnilla, in central Fruinia, with lots of nice farmland around. Its name is Gisalpina, which basically means on this side of the Alps, the big mountain range in the north. The logo hints at the farming history of the Antonelli family and uses the colors of the Fruinian flag. It is also important to talk about what is important to Lorenzo. He loves simplicity and function-driven engineering, like he can see on any farming equipment. This will show in the car's design and engineering choices. With little knowledge about technology, he wants to extract maximum performance from a car. He has understood that lightness is key to achieving this at least when aiming to perform on winding Fruinian roads. What does not contribute to the task can be left behind. The game difficulty increased a lot with the latest update, so I expect major struggles in our 100x setup. We achieve it with no money, no tech pool, a tiny plot including a building and everything else on default. I can even reduce the engineering slider by one tick and still stay on the 100x setting. The tiny factory should give us enough company value to convince a few sports car enthusiasts at the Banca Nazionale di Fruinia to fund the first project. Let's work on the first car built in the shed and take it to the bank to show them our plans and capabilities. Our first target demographic is purely based in Fruinia and it's in the light sports area. We will not enter the premium market early, we go into light sports, no fancy interior, just pure driving machines and see if we can find a market there for us. The budget is not high there, so we have to be efficient in building a cheap car, which still can perform well on the Fruinian roads. This will be a lore heavy playthrough and not necessarily will I make the optimal choices. Wherever lore tells me to do suboptimal things, I will try to follow. And we start off with the first bad but realistic choice, a leather frame. Like any mass production cheap vehicle had one back in the day and the first car is based on such a simple design. Its front engine, like all common sports cars and hand shaped aluminium panels are the obvious choice in a tiny shed. It has double wishbone front and solid axle rear suspension. Yes, this is bad, but for example Ferrari carried solid rear axles well into the 60s. We will not do that, but at least we have to start like this. The engine, taken from a donor car, a SPAM, which stands for Societa per Automobili e Motori, was a typical Fruinian family car engine. Robustly built, 750cc with room for more and a pushrod valve train. Let's make some reasonable adjustments to this engine to simulate tuning in a shed by a somewhat capable mechanic. First of all, we can rev this thing a lot higher. And then of course we have to adjust uh, the cam profile to make use of the new rev range and mostly increase the spring stiffness. And then we already see that we might need a new carburetor or at least intake. Because the old one just doesn't do it. We can work on the ignition timing and advance that a bit more. This will eat into reliability, so I don't want to overdo it. We can run it more rich. This gives us a lot more throttle response, but worse fuel economy, obviously. And we also need different engine headers. Of course, he doesn't have any casting capabilities, so he has to weld.
Staying with an eco carburetor gives us a little bit more grunt down low. So I stay with that. We had to go for cast heavy pistons. This is something we can do just by different pistons to increase our power level and reliability a bit. And we also take off some balancing mass to make the engine lighter and more responsive. We can even go to the negative here. The engine is still smooth enough. Comfort is not a priority. But also reliability suffers. So I think with this we have a good base. You can see here the comparison between the old and the new engine. So the stock spam engine and the reworked one, we extract 37 horsepower from 750 cc. The engine got a bit lighter, mostly due to the lighter exhaust headers. And basically it got worse in all regards, especially reliability, fuel economy and loudness, smoothness. Just a quick check, twin carbs would also be possible. It would look nicer, but maybe let's stay simple for the very first car. It will also save us some money. So let's put the engine into the chassis and work on the car body. The first car will be an open top roadster, basically the go-to design for hill climb races. Remove the top, save weight, keep the weight and center of gravity down low and we will try to mimic that. And we also will try to mimic with the body design, simple craftsmanship, not too complex shapes. And we want to convey that shed build feeling about this. So one important thing at the beginning is body morphing. And I can just encourage you to use the hidden morph UI because then you can see all of the different morphs for this body and you don't miss an important one which might be small or hidden or at a weird location. So just go through this list and try to get what you want to achieve. Alright, I'm basically done with the shape, but you can see the chassis is poking through. So we have to adjust this and use the basic chassis. And you can do that here in the advanced trim settings. So then you get this, which basically doesn't hinder you in the body shape. And we have a lot more freedom now to do what we want. I see that here the side is a little bit poking inside. I'm pretty happy with this. So on the way to painting, We'll definitely make a new paint for this, a very specific Gisalpina paint. And this is mostly red, a little flake and medium shine because we don't have very good painting equipment. Yeah, it always ha has a little bit of an orange touch. Just a little bit here. Make it a bit darker, remove a bit of the saturation because red always is difficult on photos to be just a bit too red. Definitely a bit darker and I give it just the tiniest amount of flake to look a bit better. Yeah, I'll start with this and then take a look at photographs to see if we need to change a few things or not. And now towards the design. The one thing I want to get right in the beginning is the wheels because they contribute a lot to the look of the car. Choosing the right rims and getting the right wheel sizes is important to me. Therefore I will already make some basic choices in the first two tabs to be able to set the wheel size and then come back to the visual design. And for getting your 40s and 50s cars right I can just recommend Aruna's wire wheel pack, lots of good choices in there. 
we can also see that the brake drums are poking through. So again, this is something we can fix here in the advanced trim settings. In the wheels section, you have the brake offset and can now pull the brake drums inside. Alright, that's looking a lot better. Bicycle tires. And yeah, now we can get started. As I said, I want to keep it simple, I want it to look basic and maybe I also try to not align things perfectly because the job execution is not that good um, and it's just handmade stuff. So maybe not all the vents will be the same size and aligned properly. When it comes to headlights I can only recommend to not scale them because they typically come in sizes that were available on the market and there have been regulations for example in America who only have certain sizes so don't scale them it will immediately make your cars more realistic and the proportions are looking right. Here an important trick um, when you want to make a grill from various parts, shift, click and drag to duplicate your fixture. This helps a lot. So I have now slightly rotated and moved the various vents so that it doesn't look as clean and so that it looks like built in a shed. But we already have our nice and fancy logo. I made this many years ago for this brand so this brand is really important to me. Alright, we got our number plate also mounted a bit askew. That's as complicated as I want to get on the front. We will do a little bit of detailing later, but the basic shaping is already what I want to have. As we are extracting quite a lot of power from this tiny engine, we need a bit of ventilation and therefore add a few vents on top. Unfortunately, there's not a very good fixture for this cutouts in the hoods that we have seen in these early days very often. So I have to go with this one. So again, I'm not focusing on perfect alignment here and even want to offset them a bit relative to each other. On the sides we need door handles and again here we are going for something very simple. And the fixture I want is not even in the door handle section. That's our advanced door lock. I'm also not going for any bumpers because this is a race car basically for the road and bumpers would be removed if there were any from factory, but of course this is not a production car, never had any bumpers. For the taillights, again, something very basic. I want to see screws, I want to see rivets, so that's what we want. And what I also want to add is a spare wheel here on the back of the car. Therefore we first have to build our indentation. I choose a round vent for that, align it to the surface, scale it, we'll see the rest later. And then there's a fixture called extra wheel and it's in the 3D section, yep, you can choose that, place it, put it on. And you can always click to match the size, the front or the rear wheels. So this is really handy. All right, that's one part. And now we have to fix the wheel in place, of course. And this will be the most difficult job of this overall car design, I guess.
All right, I spent way too much time on this, but sometimes you have to go the extra mile to get something special. Next up, fuel cap. Basic things will do here as well. And I guess it's time to also think about our roof. We finally have to get rid of it. And we do that mostly with paint. The transparent paint always helps. And then we just have to cover up the back of the car, which is always a big pain in the ass from my point of view. And we have two extra trim strips we have to get rid of. Our cutout patches will do the job there. Right, that now gives us a big hole we have to fill with interior. Alright, the very basic interior is done. I really love this fixture here for the transmission tunnel. It adds so much with all the details. Then very basic dashboard. What I especially like is that we have Italian lettering on there by default. And uh, yeah, now we need a windshield, we need to cover the sides, and we need to cover the rear. And then we are already done and ready for detailing. Yeah, what we can also see is that the steering wheel is a bit offset with regards to the seats, but I think that's fine. That's realistic for such kind of early cars. Maybe it is a bit extreme. All right, and that's basically it. Now it's just about giving it some rivets because the body panels are just bolted in place and because this is also what gives the car its name. It's the Rivetto, the Italian name for the rivet. And what's also kind of funny is that the German word for rivet, Niete, basically also stands for somebody who is really bad at something or a lottery ticket which doesn't win. Let's hope this car is not the losing ticket, but the winning ticket for us. Let's finish the design. Wow, this took so long.
all right and i think with this we're done i think the little details really add a lot so all the rivets the bolts and also this badge here really add something to the overall feeling So let's head on to engineering. And for engineering it's basically the same basic stuff we'll have to do. So I already have selected a 4-speed gearbox. We will tune it later, but it will definitely not go up to 260. The wheel size already is somewhat correct. We will stay on this bicycle tires. I also chose the diameter to be a little bit smaller than default here. It will save a bit of cost, it will bring center of gravity down low and we definitely don't need huge brakes for this light car. Speaking of brakes, there we are. I'll leave it at default for now and we'll check out later. Aerodynamics also basic. I want to improve the aerodynamics a little bit because we don't even have a windshield here. So it, I think it makes sense to invest a little bit here even though it hurts, but then the top speed will be a bit better. Reducing the cooling airflow does not bring too much, so cooling effective area is just 0.013. So it's about 2% of the overall drag as of now, and I don't think it's worth it to reduce it and to get the reliability penalty. So because of our small engine, this is so low, so we could even increase it and wouldn't suffer a lot. Well, let's go to 60. And then, of course, this is a two-seater with a detachable soft top. It's not actually a detachable soft top because where would you attach the soft top if you don't even have a windshield? But I thought maybe at least we have some kind of cover where you can close the interior off in case it rains and the car is parked somewhere. So this is how I interpret detachable soft top in this case. Interior is basic. No entertainment, obviously. The car is entertaining enough. And then steering, manual rack and pinion for the sporty feel. No safety. We could also, of course, add a little bit of lightness. And then we're at 554 kilograms. I would love to get below 550, but we'll check that out later. So suspension, let's go for sport. Maybe a bit softer than that. Because we don't have any comfort anyway, and we still need to sell it. So currently at 3.6. I'm also concerned about safety with 7.8 and they are already complaining even in the light sports categories. And I think Fuenia has a minimum safety requirement at some point. Yeah, minimum safety 8 in 1950. It would be interesting how this progresses, but I guess it's 10 in 1960. But we should at least have this in mind. Eight <laughs> is already challenging without um, safety equipment. And we're at 7.8. God damn it. So let's first try to get everything up and running. We have basically no brake fade. So we can even decrease the brake size. But yeah, it's not really drivable. That's no. It's also definitely not as fast as I thought. And it also takes 17 or 18 seconds to get up to speed. So not too good. So what can we do? Yeah, drivability is mostly coming from suspension setup. Let's get that done with tow. Yeah, that gave a huge boost. So always have in mind to not only check out the slow steering graph, but also the fast steering graph. Both need to be on ending on the understeery side to get your drivability up. And what else can we do? Comfort is really low, but there's not a proper way to improve it without adding interior. And adding quality wouldn't be right from a lower perspective. So maybe just maybe we say that our chassis is a bit better but even that does not really help it does help with weight though so let's go for plus two here it 
safety. Um, I'm really concerned that we won't sell anything at all if I don't choose safety. Standard 40 safety means windshield safety glass and bumpers. We don't have a windshield, so I don't think we have a problem here uh, with this thing. And bumpers are designed and tested for impact absorption. They will definitely absorb any impact because the whole car is the bumper. The panels just fold away and uh, the impact is then transferred into the frame. Okay, well, maybe not the best. So I definitely cannot go for advanced safety, that would be too advanced. So let's stick with standard. Oh, but where do we lose all of the, our safety? Yeah, 10% are from convertible. That's a problem. Yeah, what doesn't help, the base values are coming from the body, which is basically body age, I guess. Then weight, and we don't have weight, and footprint, and we don't have a large footprint. So I guess we have to live with it. Go for the standard safety package. And I'm just trying to find more drivability now, and it's working. But our 0 to 100 time has gotten worse a bit. I guess we just have more grip margins. Traction tests. Yeah, in the wet we have a lot of single wheel spin, I guess. Off-road is somewhat bad, but we still get a bonus for that. Yeah, very good tune here for this score, even though our maximum cornering ability suffered a bit. In general, it's, I think it's looking good here in the light sports categories. How many do we sell? Yeah, definitely not at this price point. 30, yeah, that would be awesome. Yeah, I'm, I'm really concerned about the safety. I hope this will not bite us at some point. But as long as the 8 safety is the requirement until 1960, then this car is fine. I just hoped we could save the standard safety, but we need it. Or we go for none and plus one. So this is the difference between none on the right side and standard on the left side. Four kilograms, bit of material cost, bit of engineering time. I go for the none and plus one. I just risk it. It fits more with regards to the lore. As soon as we get out a trim with bumpers, then I am willing to go to standard safety. Yeah, brakes are absolutely tiny on this one. But they do the job, so why should we add bigger ones? Alright, I think it's time to think about how do we actually want to produce this. Lorenzo wants to have the plans for the production model ready until 1947, so we don't have a lot of time and things cannot be thought through too much. Luckily we have a basic simple car at hand, so we probably can achieve that with reasonable engineering settings and still learn along the way without spending a lot of money. Yeah, so the engineering time itself is very low already. We need to get down to 12. Uh, and we also want to be cheaper than this. So let's just see. If we want to go for full learning and no money, then we have to sacrifice a bit on the left side. But this will also eat into our margin. The cheapest thing is probably to go for manual tooling, because actually it's a hand-produced car. So with something like this, we should be fine. The project just costs 60k. I could also remove a little bit of reliability. Let's go to 40 and then bring that tooling slider up again. Because we have some tooling available in our farm, we can think about making the production a bit efficient and we have space and, and stuff like that. So that it's not a big problem. I think with these settings, we should be fine. So same for the engine. Now this is not completely law friendly because we have to actually develop the whole engine. We cannot just buy it uh, or buy a base engine and tune it like I tried to role play it. We are actually developing the, the base engine as well. Also remove some reliability. Here it will be really expensive to bring those sliders down from my point of view. The easiest thing is to reduce a bit on the material cost side. But I also have to bring down the tooling. Okay, it doesn't actually cost too much. So I, I leave the tooling here a, a little bit up because it's a mass produced engine at spam. Yeah, still 100k engineering cost is fine. And then we have our 
contractor here um, delivering the engine to us and we are just doing the tuning and uh, yeah let's give it the proper name so uh, let's see what the Sucrieta will charge us for this engine 3.2k nice but that's already with the add-ons and the nice headers and, and the nice intakes and so on yeah we have to live with that now our own factory yeah so for the beginning we just have a few local farmers help out for a few hours a day we will hire proper stuff and extend to normal working hours um, when it's needed but for now let's keep the cost low stay flexible and nimble just like our cars in the long term lorenzo is not interested in managing personnel and huge staff numbers for two shifts a day so let's try to focus on normal working hours with lots of time for siesta and dolce vita so here i go for two months until one shift which means we will have a half a shift within one month that should be pretty good here on this screen everything looks fine as of now but we still need to adjust a few sliders i guess so best would be to bring up the automation slider all the way we will lose a few cars per month the optimum is somewhere around here and also to have very good tooling would be good to improve our profits reduce the cost but it also will drive up our construction costs so let's say we have good tooling because we already are on the farm have our equipment there but the automation i will not pull that up too much so here with a very manual approach we lose a lot of profit margin but we are at 100 efficiency here we need to bring it up a little bit let's say to 25 then we have a good profit here qa um i don't think we know what qa is right well our recall chances are quite low so let's say we find two out of three issues and the rest will be luck or bad luck so the forecaster it's actually quite good 15k means 100 percent margin and it looks like we can sell those cars yeah during the first year from uh, during development um, lorenzo will take the prototype to the local hill climb events and races and basically advertise the car by hopefully being successful and from interested people he will take a deposit or 25% of the value of the car and promise them to deliver for the next racing season. So that's our business plan for now. Um, let's hope this will convince our managers, the bank managers of the Banca Nazionale di Fuinia. Let's show them our car, let's show them our plan and let's hope they fund our project. So we're leaving the farm and head into the city. The car accelerates actually quite nicely. So we definitely feel that it's low weight. It also corners well, it's nimble. Of course, Absolute Group is not there with our bicycle tires, but it quickly reacts to steering inputs. The only trouble is during the faster corners, switching direction, we have a bit of trouble because we just have an open diff and the inner wheel tends to lose traction. So that's not the easiest way. Even though we just have a 38 horsepower car, it's not that easy to drive to, through the corners. But that will all be fixed later down the way. We just have to collect experience and we already feel that with this power to weight ratio, definitely a more advanced stiff would make sense. But we don't have the technology yet, so we'll have to wait. Now we are off the main roads, taking a shortcut through the mountains and this basically is already good practice for the Millimonti we want to enter. The Millimonti is a round trip around western Fruinia and as the name says it goes through quite a lot of mountain passes, really testing the car's acceleration and braking performance, the cornering potential through fast and also slow corners and most importantly for Lorenzo the streets will be lined with spectators. Many people from Fruinia have a sweet spot for sports cars 
and they will be waiting and watch their heroes. Lorenzo is not a hero, he's not a race driver, but he wants to showcase this car to as many people as possible and the Millimonti is the perfect event to do that. And it's part of our business plan. So a decent performance is key and it's also important that the car will last. We didn't take any major shortcuts with regards to reliability, so no engine stress or something like that. Of course the overall drop is a bit shoddy, but it should be able to get to the end as long as the car is treated with respect. On the horizon we can already see the city, where we'll have our appointment. Let's hope also one of the bank managers has a bit of a sweet spot for sports cars and this project. I think we have a very humble project, it doesn't cost too much. And we bring the prototype so we can really show that we know what we are doing. We have something that already works, we just need a bit of funding to start production. And while we approach the city and search a parking spot at the entrance of the bank, I want to thank you for watching. I hope you're as excited for this campaign as I am. This is really one of my passion projects, my passion brands, and I really want to enjoy this one and put a lot of focus on the cars. If you also did enjoy it, please consider liking and subscribing to help the algorithm. And for now that's it. See you all again soon. Have a great time and bye bye.